Okay, welcome to another iPad painting tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be a little bit different because I'm focusing in on a specific element of a landscape. I've already got a background here and I'm going to add some foreground pine trees to my scene. So you may have created a landscape of your own and you may want to add some trees to it, but you're not quite confident enough to do it. So this is gonna help you with that, hopefully. Not that it really matters, but this is an A4 canvas. You may have your own background anyway, so it doesn't really matter in this instance. The colors may vary in terms of what you should use for your background, but in terms of the colors I'm going to be using, they are here. And if you want to practice with the exact colors that I'm using, then there is a link in the description of this video. It will take you to my Patreon page and you can download that color file. If you just don't want to be downloading the file, then you can go to the value section within Procreate, which is the app I'm using. And I've provided you with the codes that correspond to each color all you need to do is type the codes that are in the description, put them in this box, press enter, they'll appear there, and then you can just tap them into your own creative palette. In terms of the brushes I'm going to be using, well, I'm gonna be using two different kinds of brush. I'm gonna be using within airbrushing, the medium brush for the tree trunks, and then for the foliage and all the leaves, I'm gonna to go to artistic brushes, and I've got a changed and amended version of Leatherwood. So I'll just reset it so that you can see, go back into that brush, and you can see on the faded out bits, in fact, for most of the brush, it has quite a heavy grained texture, like a canvas background almost. And I didn't want that to be appearing on my tree. I like the broken shapes that it creates, but I didn't like the grain. So all you need to do to amend it is go to the grain. I turn the scale of that grain down and I turn the depth of it up just a little bit. And you can see here, I put the scale to none and I put the depth up to about 30%. And if you ever want to reset it, just swipe it and then press reset anyway. If you're interested to know what the tip cover on the end of the Apple Pencil is, uh, I've done a review. I'm testing it out a little bit more in these next couple of videos, but I have done a full kind of review of the concept and how it works. There is a link at the top of the screen there if you want to check out that or you want to check it out at the end of the video. So in terms of this tutorial, I'm going to draw some tree trunks first. So I'm going to go to my brushes. I'm going to use the medium brush within airbrushing. I'm gonna to go to my colors. I'm gonna use this first color, which is my darkest color. Within the airbrushing medium brush, we're gonna turn it down to 2% and keep it at about 85% opacity. I'm going to go up into the sky area. I'm going to bring in my tree trunk, maybe press on a little bit more as it goes further down, maybe reduce the size of the brush to 1%. I can zoom in a little bit just to get a bit more precision at the top of the tree, like that. Now it doesn't need to be a straight line because it's an organic element and often even pine trees that seem like a straight tree, sometimes they will have a bit of a curve to them or they'll lean slightly as well. Okay, so once we've got that, we're gonna change our brush. We're gonna to go to our artistic brushes and we've got the leatherwood brush that I've amended in the way that I've shown you. And we're gonna turn the size of that brush down to 2% and we'll keep it at maybe about 90%. Almost full opacity, but just not quite. We'll zoom in a little bit for this. Maybe we'll leave the top of that tree trunk a little bit bare, and then we'll just start to bring in suggestions of some of this foliage. So I'm leaving some gaps as you can see there. I'll zoom in a little bit more so you can really see that. And then we're gonna move left to right in a generally swooping down gesture like that. So I'm gonna go left to right, and you can see it's got a really nice broken texture, this brush and it does a lot of the work for you. Now, it is really good to try and get your head around how to create the texture for yourself, but there's definitely some instances, some cases, whereas if you were using a traditional material with real brushes on a canvas, you would probably pick a textured kind of brush in the real world. So why not try to replicate that in some digital cases? So we're moving down the tree here. Maybe we'll leave some gaps have it slightly broken in areas so we can see more of the tree trunk and that will become useful later. We'll make a feature and a highlight of the actual trunk areas, move down our tree, leave some gaps as we go. Obviously it's getting wider as we go down, so it's narrower as it goes near the top, but as we go down it gets wider. Still important to leave some gaps. Some of those gaps will probably get filled in when we add some of the different color tones anyway. So we're it, going to do a few of these trees. This is just the first one, but you can see that the brush itself is doing a lot of the work for us, which is great. 
So when we get lower down, perhaps we'll leave the bottom section a bit more sparse. In fact, we could go back to the artistic brushes and the medium. In fact, we'll turn the size of the brush down to really quite small. So the lower end of 1%, maybe just some suggestions of small branches sticking out at the bottom. You'll notice for the rest of the tree, I didn't actually need to add any branches, but maybe just for the bottom section, a few will be appropriate. Now I am going to create another layer. You can see I've accidentally done it on the main layer. This happens all the time in digital work. Try to remember to do it on a separate layer. I am going to plow forward with the rest of the tutorial. I'm quite happy with it as it happens, so I don't need to really amend it too much. But for the, the rest of the tree and the other trees, I'm going to do it on a separate layer. So go back to our colors. We'll go to this mid-tone green. You can see I've got this dark color, a darker green compared to that one. But so there we go, a light green and a light brown as well. So we're going to this second color, which is the darker of the two greens that I'm going to be using. Go back to our brushes. We'll go into our artistic leatherwood brush again. Same settings as before. Again, on 2%, 90% opacity. And we're going to aim. We'll start near the bottom. We're going to aim for the top part of the foliage that we've created. Now, we just be careful we don't do this kind of thing. We don't want to make a straight line. We're keeping it a little bit patchier and building it in there. Now, if I just illustrate this point, here in the middle of this so you can see it. So we've just created some areas perhaps where we've got a darker silhouetted shape. So we're gonna go for our green color and we're gonna aim roughly towards the upper part of that area. Not completely, but in a general sense, we're going for the upper part of it so that the lower part remains a little bit darker still. So we'll get rid of that. We'll go back to our tree. Now it's not going to be completely uniform. If you, can, if you keep it too neat looking and exactly the same, at every step along the tree, it's going to look artificial and too regimented. So you need to change it up a little bit. Maybe you need a little bit more of the green on this side in some places, and then really not so much in other bits. Also bear in mind, you will need to do some of the green in the middle section. So it looks like some of the branches are actually coming at you as well. So some of the times it will cross over that tree trunk. Other times, you know, you'll see gaps and you'll see the tree trunk. Other times it would completely go across that trunk. And then as it gets near the top, you just do some random broken shapes. And that's going to give us the, the main point of our tree. Maybe just extends some of the top sections here. And I've chosen some of the greens that were taken from this landscape. So it, it fits the color scheme that was already there. So it's not going to feel too out of place. Obviously it needs a shadow and things to give it a sense of belonging in that scene. We're going to go back to our colors. I'll probably do this on a separate layer in case it goes wrong. Go back to our colors. We'll use this lighter green. Now this is a highlight color. Now it's fine to use it, but if you get too carried away with it, it's going to completely neutralize and get rid of that darker green. And we don't want to completely obliterate it. So we're going to use this sparingly. Now bear in mind where the light is coming from. We have light hitting this side of the mountain so presumably the sun's coming from up in this direction so we're probably going to get slightly more highlights on this side of the tree so i'm adding a suggestion of highlights here and there you don't need to go too crazy with this just hints of it here and there in fact we could even turn the opacity down on this a little bit to about 80 percent it's not going to make much difference but just a little bit if you want some of these to jump forward, then just concentrate some of the shapes in this area and then it's going to bring it further forward. So we'll find another area to do that, maybe this area. So again, we've got this upside down V shape and we'll do a series of them to bring it out towards us perhaps. And we're just picking out some slight suggestions of highlights on the top section, slightly more focused on this side, but not too much. We don't want to get rid of the dark tones and we don't want to get rid of the, the darker green either. So just some highlights, not too many. Now I'm already starting to feel like I'm heading towards adding too many, but it's just about, about the right amount. So I'm not going to add really much over this side. Maybe just another little bit here so it, it brings it forward. Now obviously we're going to need some kind of shadow for the ground so we can go back to our airbrushing medium brush we'll turn the size of the brush up a little bit to around two percent and turn the opacity down to maybe around 30 percent and go to our colors go to the darker color 
and I guess we can start to build in a suggestion here. Now it's only going to really make sense once we start getting quite a number of trees, but you might initially just want to create a sense that at the bottom of the tree, there's some impact on the ground from that tree, some kind of shadow perhaps. But we're going to start adding more. So I'm going to repeat the technique and we can do them in slightly different ways. So we can have a wider tree, we can have a more sparse looking tree where you don't see as much foliage perhaps. So I'm going to create another layer. I should have done this earlier on when I did my first tree, but I accidentally did it on the same layer as my painting. But with the rest of them will do this properly. So we're going to this layer, which is above the main painting. We'll go back to our dark color. We need to make sure that we're on the airbrushing, the medium brush, and then we're going to create another tree trunk. So if you remember, we had the size of the brush at the lower end of 2% and we had it all the way up to around 85% the opacity and maybe we'll have a, a cluster of trees here so we'll create another one now a little bit shorter maybe a little bit further away just a little bit behind really and for the top of the tree we'll turn the size of the brush even lower so we can really get a finer point at that very top part of the tree and I've deliberately made it lean slightly as well, we'll go back to our textured brushes it's not textures it's artistic brushes but it is a textured brush we'll go back to the leather wood that we changed. We'll zoom in slightly so we can see exactly what we're doing. And again, we're going to start building some sort of texture at the top. You don't need to go too crazy, perhaps leave it even sparser at the top. So there isn't really a lot going on at the top of this tree. And then perhaps it just suddenly starts a little bit lower down and we start picking up the texture pretty quickly. But again, we're going to leave big sections here. Well, that's just reminding me, we forgot to put some trunk details in there. I'll finish doing this silhouette and we'll go back to that and I'll show you that. So we'll do it quite similar to this tree. It's really close by to it, so let's not make it too different. But can you see just how easily that texture is starting to, to land in the correct kind of way? I'm not spending a lot of time fussing over the texture. I'm just moving to left to right. Maybe leave some gaps here and there. Perhaps I'll go and just fill in some other areas so it's a bit more dense. But it doesn't take a lot of work really to start to build up that effect. I think I might want to just bring these out a little bit further, however. Okay, it looks like it's floating yet because we've not got a shadow, but we don't worry about that just at this point. I'll go back to this tree and I'll show you that effect. So we'll create another layer for this and we'll put this at the very top. This is a final detail and we'll make sure we're on the right brush. So we'll go to airbrush medium brush, go back to our colors, we'll use this lighter color and we want to be quite precise with this so we'll keep it around the 1% but we will turn it quite low at around 30%. We'll zoom in and at any sections, perhaps like down here, although it's going to be largely covered by the tree above it, you might just have a slight sense that you can see a highlight on the trunk. So any section where maybe you'll see the trunk poking through, maybe you can just bring out the tree trunk there a little bit. You don't want to go too much with this either it just gives you the sense that there's there is a tree trunk running throughout so we'll go back to the layer where it has the darker green and we'll use the same technique we did before so we're using that green go back to our artistic brushes using the leather wood put the brush size at two percent 85 percent opacity zoom in a little bit we're aiming for the top sections and then we'll you can see how quickly I can start to put this in now. These trees don't need to take a long time. Once you master the, the general technique, you can start to put these in quite quickly. I mean, you still need to be just mindful of the overall appearance of it. Don't rush at it too much, but actually it is it can be quite a speedy process once you really get your head around it. And then we go to our highlight layer, go back to the light green. Again, we're still on the same brushes. We're not changing the settings. We're still on the 2% size, 85% opacity. Zoom in, make sure we're on the right layer for the highlights. Think about where the sun's coming from. We'll just get some of that highlight on the very top. Slightly more focused on that side. Now it's not going to be perfect, you know, but this is so much quicker than lots of other methods, I think. I think it's a really 
efficient way of getting the overall effect, especially if you're going to do dozens of different trees. If you were doing some in the distance, you might want to use slightly more muted, more blue greens rather than these bright, vibrant greens. These are really suitable for foreground trees. These are really trees that stand out and are vibrant colours. Then we'll go back to that top layer. We'll go back to the lighter colour. We will need to turn the opacity down. It doesn't have to be as low as 30%, but definitely down in that area. And then we'll just bring out the highlights again. So we get a, a nice contrast between dark and light on that tree trunk. Bring it out a little bit, like so. So I'm going to do a few more. Let's build up the effect. I'm keeping them all quite separate from each other at this point, so it doesn't matter if I'm using the same layers. If I wanted to start showing some that are going to be slightly further away, I might want to condense all of those layers because I'm happy with the way that they look. So once I've condensed those layers, I can actually duplicate the layers and I can move them to another area. Now bear in mind, most of that first tree was drawn on the wrong layer, so I'm just moving this one really. So I can move that to another part of the scene perhaps. Now, probably best to rub out the remainder of that part of the tree because it's not really appropriate anymore. And I could even change the, the proportions of it slightly, stretch it out a little bit so it's not quite the same looking as that tree. Try it over there. You don't want to do too much of that because anything that's obviously duplicated is going to ruin the overall look. But we'll create a few more trees. If you did decide you want to make that particular tree a little bit more distant, you could reduce the size of it, move it further up in the horizon. And another trick you can do with that layer is just reduce the opacity a little bit. I'll just bring it out here so you can see what I've done. Full opacity, you can see you've got the really vibrant colours, but because we've got a blue background, by re reducing the opacity, it takes on something of the qualities of that background. So it just subdues it and pushes it back a little bit more, which is fine. So I'm just going to create some more trees now, start to build up the effect, and you'll start to see how this can really work when you have quite a lot of them. So again, we go back to our brushes, medium brush with an airbrushing. We need to select the right colour. We're going to have somewhere in the region of 1% and 2% for the tree trunk. We're going to have to put it quite high on the opacity. And we can start building up a variety of trees, perhaps. Obviously, if it's going to be closer to you, we're going to need perhaps a, a thicker tree trunk. Maybe it needs to go higher up in the landscape too. And amend all of these. They all need to be thicker at the bottom, obviously. Go back to our artistic brush. Use the leatherwood brush. 2% opacity. Sorry, 2% size. We'll go back to that. 2% size and 85% opacity, and we're going to begin the process all over again on each of these trees. So once you've got the overall silhouettes, again, we're going to create another layer, go to our dark green color, we'll zoom back in and we'll start to add some of this green. It's a really quick process, this. Now, obviously, I'm, I'm trying to show you how quickly it can be done. Now, if you're working on your particular scene, then you might spend a bit longer on each individual tree, but it's still going to have sped the process up massively, I would say and it really does give a really nice painterly finish. Much more textured than really the amount of time deserves. But sometimes shortcuts are a good thing. If you decide that the, the green is perhaps just competing a little too much, you can just tone it down a little bit. This is the great thing about working on different layers. You can just turn it down a little bit and then try for the highlights. We'll create another layer, go to our highlights, zoom back in, and we can try those in areas too. Maybe in some areas, 
the only place the highlights is going to make an impact is just near the top. And because there's quite a lot of build up of trees now and perhaps it doesn't reach certain areas or if it does it does it in a minimal way. One of the last details that you could perhaps add is the shadow on the ground again so let's just really go to our soft brush so within the airbrushing or the medium brush anyway uh, we'll have the size of the brush at two percent turn the opacity down to around 30 percent and we just need to give it a sense that these trees are actually well, that's too strong we'll turn it down even more 20 25 percent these trees are making an impact on the ground they're creating shadows they're creating shadowed areas perhaps even Perhaps turn the size of the brush up a little bit more to the top end of 2% and even lower opacity to around 15% and we could just really drive home the idea that this whole area perhaps is shadowed. It gives it so much more a sense of believability when you do that. Ties them to the ground, ties them to the environment much better. Shadows over this side, same principle. And that's, that's kind of getting at the kind of effect, really. I'm not bothered adding the highlights to those. I just wanted to show you the, the effect and how you can start to build it up. You can spend as much time on this as you want. Um, it is a much faster process, so it frees you up to really then start going back into it with either the, the brushes that I've shown you or any other kind of brushes at that point and just fine tune because you've already created the overall effect. But if there's some bits that by using that effect that you think could be improved slightly, well, you've bought yourself a lot more time really you made it more efficient and now you can go back in and just tweak and amend things to your liking anyway i hope that's been useful make sure to check out my other videos subscribe press the bell notification otherwise you might not get notified about future tutorials and i'll catch you back here soon see you later